Hi, and welcome back to a new five-part series of Cooking with Nick. I'm Nick Rizzo, and during this session, I will show you with a little pre-planning how to produce a four-course delicious and healthy meal in under an hour. So sit back, relax, grab a pencil and paper to take notes so you can make this meal at home. My class is ready, and they look hungry, so I have to get started. Okay, uh, tonight uh, is going to be all vegetarian stuff, and uh, we're going to be starting with an apples and mixed green salad, uh, which has a yogurt-based dressing for it, so uh, it's light, uh, has a little bit of horseradish in it, so you get a little bit of a kick in there, and um, I'm going to show you how to make garbanzo bean burgers, uh, but you could use, when, when I show you how to do this, you can use whatever kind of beans you want, or you can use mixed beans. You can use black beans, you can use pinto beans, you can use whatever you want and mix it up. Um, when, when I make them tonight, I'm going to make them small and I'm going to serve them on slider rolls mm -hmm. because if you've ever made them before and you try to make them big, they, they fall apart, okay? And it's very hard to get them together. So I'll show you how to make them real easy, very simple. Everything is in the food processor and takes about two minutes. And hey, what kind of meat's going to go in there? What, <laughs> what kind of beans can go in there? Any kind of beans you want. <laughs> And for a side dish, we're going to have roasted vegetables, and I'm going to make a balsamic glaze. And a balsamic glaze is, is basically what I'm going to do is take some balsamic vinegar, uh, reduce it by about half, and it gets very syrupy and thick. Like, it looks like maple syrup, actually. But what happens is it gets very sweet. Uh, you can use that on a number of things. Uh, if you go to Italy or Venice, one of the famous desserts there is uh, fresh strawberries on vanilla ice cream with balsamic glaze. They, they serve it on fruit. So I'll show you how to do that. Uh, also tell you what to do when you have roasted vegetables that are left over, which you always have because you always make a lot. Uh, and then for dessert, you know, I'm always, dessert for me is always something that's easy. Okay, so we're going to make a strawberry cream, and we're going to serve that on, uh, you can serve it on pound cake. We're going to use those little dessert shells, those little pound cake shells, and drizzle some chocolate and some almonds on top. So very light dessert. Okay, let me give you the... Uh, the recipes for you. Okay, pass those around. <clears throat> and you know, in order to get to get the meal together, so that you can serve it in under 45 minutes or an hour, you, you can't just start at the top and go all the way down. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to start with the roasted vegetables because those are going to have to go in the oven for about 20, 25 minutes. And I'm going to start the balsamic glaze and let that go. But before we do that, that appetizer that you had there has only three things in it, okay? There's, uh, it's, it's a great appetizer to have in your refrigerator. You, you can make it fancy. You can get a little, little pumpkin or a gourd, carve it out, put the dip inside of it, put it on a fancy tray and put the crackers around it or whatever. It's uh, a block of cream cheese. And you can, you, if, you, if you're into, you need fat-free cream cheese, you could use that. Uh, one cup of pumpkin pie filling. Okay, not, not just plain pumpkin. If you, you can do it with plain pumpkin, but then you have to put all the spices in it. You can just put pumpkin pie spice or, you know, nutmeg and whatever. But I just use the filling. It's easier. And a half a cup of powdered sugar. That's it. Only three things. Just whip it all together and you're all set to go. Okay, let it sit for about 15 minutes till all the flavors blend and you're all set. Okay, like I said, you can make it fancy, put it in a little pumpkin shell and serve it, you know. But you could make that days ahead, it'll stay in your refrigerator for as long as you can keep cream cheese. So, uh, and if you wanted to, you could actually freeze it, you know, but it'll stay for a while. So, uh, and I like to serve that with the ginger snaps because it just it gives it a, a little Halloween-y flavor, you know, so I like ginger snaps. You can serve it with uh, vanilla crackers, vanilla wafers, you know those kind of crackers. Okay, so we're going to get started on making our roasted vegetables. And what I'm going to do is I have some balsamic vinegar 
And if you're going to make a, if you're going to make this glaze, balsamic vinegar is very sweet. Um, if you've never had it, uh, how many people have never tasted balsamic vinegar? You've never had it? okay. It's uh, it, it doesn't taste like regular vinegar. It's very it's kind of sweet and syrupy. Okay, so uh, if you're going to make this uh, a glaze and you're going to put it on the vegetables, uh, don't buy the most expensive kind. Okay, because you can buy balsamic vinegar that's real expensive, like this bottle here would cost about $20. Okay, you don't want to do that. Buy the kind that's medium priced or whatever. So I'm going to put in here about a, oh, about a cup, cup and a half. If you don't want to make the glaze like this, what you can do is when you get all the vegetables on the tray, just sprinkle it with balsamic vinegar. And then when, it, when the vegetables bake, it'll reduce. Okay, you can do it that way also, which is probably most of the time the way I do it, okay? But I just want to show you how to make this glaze. Okay, so I got, you know, about a cup in there. And I'm going to put this on medium just to bring it up, and then I'm going to turn it down to simmer. Okay, so we got that going. Well, you don't have to worry about that, just let it sit. But you also got to watch it a little bit because you don't want it to, to burn. Okay, so for our, what we're going to include on our roasted vegetables, and you could do whatever kind of roasted vegetables you like. I, you, uh, I'm going to use onions, potatoes, some cherry tomatoes, mushrooms, carrots, and celery. You could use broccoli, cauliflower. Uh, if you've never had roasted cauliflower, it's delicious. Asparagus. Uh, just throw it all in there. Okay, you, you make whatever you want. But what you want to do when you do this is make sure when you slice everything up, that the, the chunks are about the same size because you want them to all cook evenly, okay? So I'm going to use two onions. If you have a real, you know, sometimes you get those onions like baseball size, okay? So you only use one, okay? And plus it depends on how many people you're cooking for. So uh, this recipe is designed for six, six to eight people. I, I have some I made this afternoon that, that's in the oven staying warm. You know, I always do a backup in the afternoon, so. Okay, so I'm going to cut this in chunks. And just throw it on your, your sheet. And what you want to use is, ooh, a piece of skin on there. What you want to use is uh, a baking sheet like this. Is it greased? Huh? Will grease the sheet? I'm going to put olive oil on the whole thing, and then I'm going to toss it, okay? So, so, no, you don't have to grease it first. If you use a pan that has big high sides on it, what's going to happen when it cooks? Moisture is going to come off the vegetables, and it's going to steam, okay? So they will never turn brown. You'll never get any color on them because they'll steam. Just like when you cook mushrooms, make sure you don't add salt because the moisture comes out and they just steam and they'll never turn brown. Okay? Same thing with the vegetables. So you want a pan with low sides on it. Okay? So I have some red potatoes. You could use red potatoes, white potatoes, purple potatoes, whatever kind of potatoes you want. I like the red potatoes because you don't have to peel them. You know, and you can get those white fingerling potatoes or the white potatoes and you don't have to peel them. So... You just throw them right on the pan. So again, I'm going to cut them all about the same size. Remember, this, the smaller you cut them, the faster they'll cook. So that's what you want to do. And this is something you could also do ahead. Like if you wanted to do it, you know, you were going to serve it during the week. You could do it on a Sunday afternoon, you know, what, put the Bills game on and let them cook and then put them in a pan and then you can just reheat them. Okay. I'm going to put in some, these are grape tomatoes. I'm not going to do anything with them. I'm just going to throw them on the pan. Okay. What happens with the tomatoes is the flavor concentrates in the burst, and they get nice and uh, juicy. Okay, so I have some carrots and celery that I peeled and washed. Again, if you have these in your garden, deer, the only thing deer don't eat, celery. Okay, was the only thing I had left in my garden. I had five beautiful <laughs> sunflowers come out. They were about this big. You know, you gave me those seeds for the sunflowers, Belle? They were about this big. And those suckers came last night, jumped right over that little thing, and just started eating them. So now I have one left. 
<laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> so I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Tomatoes cook quicker than the other things? Uh, well, that, that's okay because what, it, what it'll do is make a little bit of juice, juice. Okay. you know, so you'll be fine. Okay, so I got the celery on there. Okay, what I'm going to do, like these skinny little parts of the carrot, I'm just going to cut like that. The rest of them I'm going to cut in half and make like half moons. The carrots will probably be the thing that take the longest to cook, but I don't like mushy carrots. So that's okay. Get those on a pan. And the mushrooms I bought, you can, if you uh, have the, uh, the little mushrooms, the little button mushrooms that are real small, those are fine. You can just put them on whole. You don't have to do anything with those. I, I couldn't find those at the store, so I got uh, sliced mushrooms, and we're going to put those on. Okay. I like the little button mushrooms. Those are kind of nice, but uh, you can't find those all the time. And again, then you don't have to cut them. Okay, put that on there. Put some mushrooms on. That you don't have to do anything with. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to sprinkle these uh, with olive oil and some salt and pepper. Okay, I'm going to put just a little pinch of, kind of uh, red pepper on here. Okay, just to give it a little, you know. Uh, yeah, I'm a red pepper freak. I like red pepper on stuff, so I don't. But a lot of people don't like it, so I'm just going to put just a couple of sprinkles, just so you know it's there. Okay. So that's it. I'm going to put some olive oil on here. And again, people always ask me what kind of olive oil I buy. I use, I use extra virgin olive oil for everything. I, I don't, you know, it says you can use regular olive oil for frying or whatever. I just buy extra virgin olive oil. I use it for everything. And I, I like uh, Filiberio. It's a medium priced, you know, but it, it's, also, it's very good. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just put that on there. You want to be generous with it. I'm going to lower the, the, the balsamic vinegar because when that comes to a simmer, you want to, now I'm just going to let it simmer until it reduces. Okay, so we have all that on there. And I'm going to get this water going so I can get my hands washed as soon as I mix that together. Okay, what you should do when you're going to do this, leave the water running because then you could run over and get your hands cleaned at the same time. Okay? This is the part you let the kids do in your house or, or, or if you have company, you know, those people that come to your house and always want to help in the kitchen, let them do it. <laughs> you know, I don't like people in my kitchen working with me. I like to work by myself. So. Now you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you come, if I ask you to do the vegetables, you're all set. <laughs> okay, so those are all mixed. That's all you want to do. If you, don't, if you want to avoid this part and you don't like to stick your hands in it, you know, put, put all the vegetables in a big bowl, toss it in a big bowl, and then put it on there. Okay. Or, or a baggie or however you want to do it. It depends on how many you're going to make. If you're going to make a lot, I mean, you know, the baggie might not be big enough. But what you can do is cut up all the vegetables before put them in a big plastic bag, and then when you're ready to do this, you can just put it on the tray, okay? So you have that part of it out of the way, you know? I always like to do a lot of stuff ahead of time because when people come to my house to eat, I like to talk to them. I don't like to stay in the kitchen all the time, so you, you're stuck there, okay? That's it. I'm going to put this in the oven. Uh, I have the oven on 450, okay? So I'm going to leave it in there for probably about 20, 25 minutes or so. You'll, you'll see because the tomatoes will start to burst, okay, and then you'll know that they're going to be ready. Okay, so we got that in. So our vegetables are basically going. Next thing I'm going to work on is the salad because you're going to have the salad first. Okay, and then I'm going to, while you guys are eating salad, I'll set up to do the burgers. Okay, we'll get those going. So then you'll have burgers and roasted vegetables together. 
and then we'll go on to the dessert. Okay. The salad again is very simple. The the most the most difficult part about it is the dressing, which is not hard, but okay. So this has apples, celery, cranberries, walnuts. Basically, all the stuff you okay. Hmm? The deer? <laughs> You're never going to live down that deer story, are you? Oops. I'm going to use in here. I'm going to use Granny Smith apples just because I like them, uh, and they're nice and crunchy. So we have about five of those. A couple of lemons. Okay. It's getting nice and syrupy. Okay, what I'm going to do is I have, uh, <laughs> I couldn't find huge salad bowls, so we have this big bowl <laughs> that I'm going to put the salad in. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> and I have uh, a spring mix salad. Okay, I like these. These are great, you know, so. And it looks like it's not a lot, but once you start putting it in there, it's a lot of salad. So I'm just going to put that in, all in a bowl. Just fluff it up. And you can use whatever kind of greens you like. I mean, I just happen to like the spring mix because it's got, uh, the only kind of lettuce I really don't like is frise. You know, that little curly stuff that's kind of whitish. And uh, I'm really not crazy about that, and I just don't like the texture of it. You know, and I don't like the, I don't like the fact that it's almost white, you know. But you know why it's white? Because they, they grow it in the dark, so it doesn't get any chlorophyll. So just thought you, in case you're on Jeopardy, that my question might come up. Okay, so I have uh, some celery, and I'm just going to dice that up. Into the small salad. <laughs> you guys are going to eat a lot of salad, I hope. <laughs> okay, so that's in. I have, these are uh, like half walnuts. You know, they're not the minced kind because you want to be able to see them when they're in there. Okay, so I'm going to put those in. And uh, dried cranberries. Okay, you can use dried apricots, you can use raisins, you can use white raisins, whatever. I just like the, the color contrast of that. Okay, now we're going to chop up the apples. And you don't have to take the skin off, just leave the skin on. Okay, when you're doing the apples, just go around, around the core. You know, I have an apple corer somewhere, you know, but, you know, I never know where those things are. Okay, so and we're just going to cut it up into bite-sized pieces, not real, not real teeny. Okay, and we're not going to make them real small because you want to you see the apple in there. You want to be able to taste it. And you could use, you know, any kind of apple you like. Red apples, candy apples, those would be good, <laughs> you know. Okay. I keep forgetting to bring that little thing that I have that you scoop under and picks everything up, you know. It's in one of the drawers somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I look for it when I go home. <laughs> okay. If you want to chop these apples up ahead of time, uh, what you'll need to do is 
Uh, get some acidulated water, which is just a bowl of water with uh, lemon juice in it. Okay, you need some kind of citric uh, acid, lemon juice, orange juice, whatever you have around. Uh, put that in the water and then put the apples in it and let them sit in there and then they won't turn brown. Okay, otherwise they'll turn brown. But so you can do this part ahead. You know, I know having you sitting there watching me do this is kind of boring. But, uh, okay, I think I'm going to do one more. I think there's a lot of, a lot of apple in there. And my wife is home having jambalaya and salad tonight. Everybody always asks me, what does your wife have when you do these classes? <laughs> so I made some jambalaya, and she's having that. <laughs> and she's on her way to California. She's going to California for the weekend. OK, so that's all of our salad ingredients are in here. I'm just going to give this a toss. I feel I'm back working at the restaurant. You know, this big bowl here. <laughs> but, okay, so we got that going. Now we're going to make the dressing. And I need some yogurt, sour cream. And I'm going to use uh, plain, it's plain yogurt. I'm going to use the Greek yogurt because it's nice and thick. Okay, you can use whatever kind of plain yogurt you like. I don't. Uh, this was on sale, so that's. <laughs> you know. And we're gonna use lemon juice and some horseradish, just to give it a, a little bit of a kick. Which. I knew I had the horseradish. Okay, a little salt and pepper. So we're gonna, I'm going to juice a couple of lemons. And again, to get the most juice out of them, either put them in the microwave for 10 seconds or just roll them on the counter. And I found my little juicer. <laughs> I need to figure out how to use it. <laughs> okay. See how much juice I get out of this as opposed to squeezing. My son bought this for me about 10 years ago as a little stocking stuffer. So I put it away and then I, I finally found it. So it <laughs> We had an interesting day today. We had uh, carpeting installed yesterday in our family room. So, you know, all the furniture was out. And then we have these bifold doors on the closet that are solid wood. So uh, I had all the furniture back in by the time my wife got home from work today. So I had everything put back in. I moved the couches. I had the dolly. I was moving every <laughs> everything back in. So I said, well, let me see if I can get those doors back on. So if you've ever put bifold doors on, they're like hard to, you know, you have to put these little springs down and, the clip in, and you got to get them straight, and the whole thing. Well, she kept telling me, wait till I get home, and I'll help you with it, because it's a two-person job, <laughs> okay? So I said, nah, I could do it. Well, I missed the clip, and it fell, and the door went through the wall. <laughs> so now I, now I have to repair the whole wall. <laughs> yeah, so she came home, and she's looking, and she said, hmm, try to put the doors on by yourself, huh? Hmm, okay. There we go. So uh, it is never a dull moment in our house. Okay, so I have, I'm going to put some sour cream in here. Okay, and that's going to be the base and yogurt. So you didn't put all that sour cream in, you just put like No, I didn't, no, I didn't put the whole thing in, no, <laughs> no. Okay, give that a little stir. I'm going to put in some horseradish. Uh, 
And, and this you can put in, uh, once we get the salad dressing going, we'll taste it, and then we'll, we'll see. I, I like horseradish, so I don't know. I'll just, I'll just put a little bit in right now. And some lemon juice. The lemon juice you can adjust depending on how thick you want the, the dressing. Okay, and a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay. I'm going to put just a little touch of cayenne, just to, just so you know it's there. I like I like to taste the cayenne when it goes in the back of your throat and it goes, ooh, okay. Guess there's some in there. Okay, I'm going to whisk this up. This is one of those dressings. Usually when it says whisk, I usually put it in a jar, you know, and just shake it up. But this is one of those that it would be kind of difficult to put in a jar and shake it up. So I'm just going to whisk it together. And you just want to whisk it until it gets incorporated and smooth. And remember, you're going to have all the greens. You're going to have the, the sweet uh, uh, cranberries. You're going to have the sweetness from the apple. So you don't really want this to be too sweet because it will be really overpowering. So, so that's why you use the yogurt because it's going to have that tarty taste, the plain yogurt. Okay, so the only way we're going to know if this is okay is to have somebody taste it. So, who wants to taste it? Courtney, come up here. <laughs> Just drink it and see if it's okay. <laughs> oh, but you can't even taste that. What do you, is it okay? Mm -hmm. Need salt and pepper or anything? Mm -hmm. No? Okay, good. Drop that in the sink. Okay, so that's our dressing, and we're all set to go. So I'll pop this on the salad. Then I'm going to move the salad over there where all the spoons and everything are. You guys could have salad. I'm going to clean up a little bit and get ready for the make the burgers. Okay, so I'm just going to put this on. And you have to eat a lot of salad. So that's it. Just going to toss this. Ooh. Okay, just a, a, a hint for you. If, you, if you're going to do this and you're going to make any kind of salad and you're going to have a party, <coughs> excuse me, and you don't want to spend a whole lot of time dressing the salad and doing all that. <coughs> What you can do, and what they do in like catering, <clears throat> you put the salad dressing on the bottom of the bowl. Then you put all the greens on top, and all, whatever else you're going to put on it. And you could leave it in your refrigerator for a couple hours, okay, as long as it's covered. Then when you're ready to go, you just toss it and bring all the dressing up from the bottom, okay. That way, the, the greens all stay nice and crisp, and they don't get soggy from the dressing because the dressing's on the bottom, okay. So that's what they do when you do catering because. You don't have time to do all that, so it, that's already mixed. So you're not that special that they make it individually for you, okay? So, okay, I'm going to put this over there. The plate, salad plates are over here. You can, this is the part where you have to get up and serve. I know it's so hard to get up and serve yourself, okay? And then uh, we'll take a little break, and I'll clean up, and we'll get ready for the burgers. There you go. Okay, we're going to uh, go on to the bean burgers. Uh, as I said, what, we're gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make small ones and serve them on slider rolls. This is, a, this is a great appetizer if you don't want to use it as a whole meal. You could make these way ahead. You could stick them in your freezer. You can leave them in your refrigerator. There's nothing in them that's going to spoil. It's basically beans and that's about it. You know, a little bit of seasoning. So I like to make the small ones because if you make the big ones, they tend to fall apart. You know, you, uh, unless you buy the ones that are ready made and God knows what's in those. So, uh, but the first thing I'm going to start with is I'm going to show you how to make, it's called a, a tzatziki sauce, which you can serve over it. It's a, a cucumber dill sauce is what it is, okay? But it's, it's a Greek sauce. It's made with yogurt, cucumbers, a little bit of lemon juice, uh, dill, and all mixed together. Uh, a little salt and pepper. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the cucumber. Some of this out of the way here. 
trying to, and keeping an eye on my balsamic because it, it's coming to a, it's been boiling a little bit and I want it to reduce. Okay. So I'm going to take a cucumber and I'm just going to shred it right into the bowl with the skin and all. Just make sure you wash it. And you just want to get the outside part because you don't want all that water. You know, you want just a little bit of the coloring from the cucumber. So basically, that part's going to be left. So you're going to like that. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> I'll throw it at him when I get home. <laughs> We've never had so many deer in our yard as this past year. We've had, we have like herds. You know, there's like 10 to 12 of them that are running through the back of our yard. <laughs> okay, so we want a little bit of that. And we're going to add some sour cream. And a little bit of lemon juice. And this is, I had some lemon juice left over from when I used that great little lemon device, you know. So a little bit of lemon juice in there. A little bit of salt and pepper. I don't like to use a whole lot of salt, so I, 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 I'm very careful about what I put in. So, uh, and I have some dill. And this is just dried dill. If you have fresh, you can use fresh. Okay, just want to stir that up. Again, this is a sauce you can make way ahead, leave it in your refrigerator. You could use this to serve with crackers or fresh vegetables. Uh, you could use the same amount, but then, you know, you taste it at the end. You know, the, the dried is a lot stronger, right. you know, so I always use the dried, you know, because I like the strong dill taste, so I just use that. Plus, you, plus, when you go buy dill, you have to buy this much, and all you need is like a tablespoon, so unless you want to make a centerpiece, I mean, what do you do with the rest of it, you know? It's not one of those things that you kind of like just have hanging around and throw in a salad, so. Okay, so we got this going. Now we want to know if that's going to be okay. So come here, Belle, give us a taste. <laughs> Say ah. <laughs> there you go. Do we need any salt, pepper? No, it's good. Sounds good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's it. That's the sauce that we're going to use. We're just going to put that aside. Uh, also, what I did is you can all, when you make this dish, uh, I made a mustard sauce, so so when you get your burgers, you're gonna there's, there'll be enough so you get two each. Try some with the dill sauce and try some with the mustard sauce. And what this is, this is uh, mayonnaise, coarse ground mustard, and Dijon mustard. Okay, and you just mix that together. That's also this is also great to serve on sandwiches. Okay, rather than just plain mustard, you know this this goes great like with uh, ro uh, roast beef or you know, you can put it on like, a, a, I like tomato, lettuce, and cheese sandwiches, and, and I like this on it. You know, a nice piece of rye bread, it's great. So, just got to keep watching your balsamic, because it's, it's reducing. I can see where it was up on the top, and it's, it's going down. Okay, so I'm going to put this sauce out also when we get our burgers going. Okay, so let's get to making our burgers here. sour cream all over my hands. I don't know how I did that. I used a spoon, didn't I? I don't know how I got sour cream all over my hands. <laughs> check these vegetables. They look great. Make sure when you have the oven on 450 and you open that door, there's a lot of steam that comes out of there because the vegetables are cooking. So you want to be, don't put your face over there, otherwise you know, you're going to lose your eyelashes. Okay, so I'm basically going to, I'm going to turn that off because those are basically done. I'm just going to leave them in there to stay warm. Okay, so on to the bean burgers. So I'm going to take one can of garbanzo beans or whatever kind of beans you want to use. 
into the food processor. See why I need that can opener? Okay. <laughs> Got that in there. Clean this up. And then I'm going to put in, I have some uh, cumin. And, you know, you put, what you can use instead of uh, the cumin is uh, taco seasoning mix. You know, that gives it a different, uh, a different flavor. Uh, it's a little spicier. You can get like the hot, mild, whatever they have. Uh, and, and you can use that instead of using all these different kinds of spices. Okay, so we've got that in there. I'm going to put in some breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs is just going to give it a little consistency. Okay, so you don't really want a lot. Are these the seasoned breadcrumbs? You can use plain, whatever you have. Okay, and let's see, garlic. I always take the garlic cloves apart and put them in a baggie like this because they're much easier to deal with when you just get them. You know, I don't like all that, all those little paper things flying all over the counter. So I just cut off the ends. And if you don't want to go through all this, you can just use, you know, the ground, the garlic that's already chopped up. So, you know, once you do that, the, the skins come right off. Okay, I'm just going to give them a little squash. And then just throw them in the food process. We, the food process is going to do all the work, so you don't have to chop those. Okay, got that in. I have some scallions. Uh, if you don't have scallions, you can use chive or you can use just uh, regular onion. Just cut up the onion a little bit. If you want to give it a little bit of color, use uh, red onion. You know, so you'll see a little bit of red. Okay, obviously we're not going to use all these, so I'm just going to just throw it in. All you want to do is just give it a little hint of onion, oniony taste. Now remember I said at the beginning, because I have some backup in the oven that I'm only doing, it says two on the recipe, so I'm only doing the one here. Okay, so we just about have, let's see, da, 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 da. a little bit of sour cream is going to go in there, and then a little bit of cayenne pepper. The sour cream is going to be like a little bit of a binder, so I'm not going to really use a whole lot. What you have to do is process this and then see what the consistency is, okay? And then you go through. Uh, I know it just doesn't have it on, on your uh, recipe. And the reason I don't have it on there is because some people who are vegetarian don't eat eggs, okay? So that's, that's why I asked you if, if you eat eggs. Okay, so, uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put an egg, egg white in here just so it helps to bind it, okay? So you just get the egg white part. And depending on how fast I'm going, sometimes there's a whole egg in it, you know, so. Okay, so now we're just going to process all this. I'm going to put oh, a little bit, just a little dash of, of uh, cayenne. And then what, once these are done, what I'm going to use to measure, to make the patties is an ice cream scoop. So they basically come out all the same size, okay? <laughs> So what I'm going to have to do is to get a little bit more sour cream because you can see it's a little dry, okay? And you, you just adjust it. Push it down so it gets in there. You don't want it soupy, okay? If I was going to do this with two cans, what I would do is process the one, get that nice and smooth, and then at the very end I would throw in the other can and so you would have chunks of uh, beans in it so it wouldn't be all like a pasty kind of thing. It's kind of hard to, to see that, but you can see where it's starting to 
to come together. Just, just mix it up around there. You want to consi the consistency is going to be, you know, so you so you can scoop it up. That's what you have to have. There you go. It's kind of like making, uh, like when you put dough in your food processor and you know all of a sudden it just whips around in the ball. You know, you ever, you ever do that and all of a sudden it's done so you know it's done. That's what happens to this. It kind of like all comes together. Okay, so we take that out. So that's it. So all we have to do, now what we're going to do is fry them up. So I have the, I have the pan. You want to make sure that the pan is nice and hot. And I'm going to make a little, a little pan over here so we can put the flour in it, so we can dust them. We're going to dust them with flour. Or if you wanted to, you could use breadcrumbs to, to, to do it. But I like, I like to use flour because I like the, it gets crunchy on the outside. Okay, so I have some seasoned flour in here. And the reason I'm doing this little bowl here is because when I'm done, you can't use the flour again, so we just throw the whole thing away. And then you don't have to wash a bowl. Okay, get that moved around. So we're going to make this into little patties, and what, what, usually what I do is I take the scoop, and you get one scoop, and just plop it right in there, and get as many as you can in here, because then it's easier to handle when they're in the flour. And from this, you're probably going to get, uh, you know, about 10. From like one can of beans, you're going to get about 10, 10 burgers. Okay. So I've got to get the oil going. I'm going to use vegetable oil in here instead of olive oil because, it, you know, we have the pan that's going to be really hot. And I'll, and I'll try to hold the pan so... This the oven, the grates go like this. So, okay, I'm going to turn off the. This I don't. You probably can't. I don't know if you can see it up there, but it's like real, real thick. Okay, uh, let me see if I could pour it into a glass. Or I'll pour it into this container. Okay, so you you see what it was before. So now it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like the consistency of cough syrup. So that's what that looks like. And you don't need a whole lot of that balsamic because it's, it's, right now it's very concentrated and it's strong. Okay, so. Okay, so we have these going. And you just take your hands again and, and dust them around in the flour. You know, just make sure the flour is coating on it. Otherwise, it's going to all stick to your hands. Okay. You got that in there. Just shape them into little patties. Pop them in here. And they don't, they're not going to take very long. Don't try to take it out of there and uh, shape it into patties without dusting it in the flour. Otherwise, it's all going to stick to your hands and it'll be a mess and you'll be frustrated and you'll throw them out, you know. <laughs> We did that one time. I was trying to make, uh, you know, I really don't like to bake. I was trying to make these cookies that my sister always makes, Linzer tarts, and you have to use a sour cream dough. Well, I'll tell you what. If you don't work outside when it's 20 degrees, that dough melts like crazy. I mean, it's so soft. So uh, my wife and I were, you know, I said, I'll do it, and you, you start rolling them and whatever. Well, forget it. You know, she's a math teacher. They have no patience for anything, you know, so... So uh, we're working on this thing. All of a sudden, I hear, bam, the, the door opens, and there goes the dough right in the garbage. <laughs> she goes, we'll just have your sister make them from now on. We're not <laughs> okay, so I have two, let's see, four, six, seven, eight, nine. So we'll get 10 out of this batch. And I'm using like a, this is probably like a four-ounce ice cream scoop. 
I always feel better when I'm eating ice cream if you get like a small scoop, you know, but, but then I go in like five times, you know, so. <laughs> but that's it. So that's basically done. Move those over a little bit. So as I said before, you make these, uh, cool, put them on a, a wax paper, let them cool a little bit, put them on wax paper. You could uh, stack them in your freezer, put them in a Tupperware thing, stick them in your freezer, and you're all set. You, when you want them, you can just take them out. These make great little appetizers for a party. You know, put them on the little rolls with a little sauce on the side. They're all in there. Okay, I could do the dishes. Take that, throw it away. That's it. Get my hands clean. That's it. Those are pretty easy. Okay. Clean this up a little. Homemade ravioli. You know, if I make homemade ravioli, you know what I use? Wonton wrappers. <laughs> you could, you know, go buy the wonton wrappers and use those. And you could make, you could just use those. Or, uh, I don't like making the pasta. You go to the store and get the pasta sheets that they sell, the fresh pasta sheets. And you could use those and just put the little cheese on it, put the other top on and get a pizza cutter and go around and make it. Yeah, you can, you can so do that. Uh, I'd love to learn how to make that. I, I bought a, a little pasta machine that was supposed to make the dough and then push it out and the whole thing. Well, that went in the yard sale for two bucks. You know, <laughs> so, I mean, that thing, yeah, the dough would stick. It would get stuck in the tube, and, you know. So I guess, I guess if, unless you buy one that's, you know, a couple hundred bucks, I guess it would work. But, okay, so you got to watch these now because they're going to get, you see the color on them? That's the flour gives them that little crispy color. So that's what you want. And see, they're small, so they hold together. You gotta get this stove leveled. I've been uh, working on some classes, you know, that I might possibly do in the spring. So, which would be like after the spring break. Uh, and I think it's going to be uh, like an international kind of thing. I think I'm going to do like uh, Spanish, Mexican, uh, Italian, French, uh, Chinese, and, and good old American. <laughs> so it would be like five, five classes of different kind of international food. So that was Carolyn's idea, by the way. She said, she said, why don't you look at doing that? So I'm going to start working with some recipes to kind of slim it down so we can do it quickly. You know, so... Let's see what that. I have to keep turning this pan because it, it, the, the grate goes like this <laughs> and all the oil is on one side. Okay, so those are just about done. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the vegetables out. And I have some in here. These are the ones, these are the burgers that I did this afternoon. And these are the vegetables I did this afternoon. And what I did, I just put them in an aluminum container. You know, you could do the same thing. Okay. So, those are just about done. I'm going to take these out. Okay. And basically, you can see that these are all nice and crisped. Okay. I'm going to add these to this pot. These are aluminum baking sheets. You know, if you're going to invest any money in baking sheets, uh, make sure you get these aluminum ones. They clean up very quickly. You, you wouldn't think they would, but, uh, you know, you soak them and put a little water in it and let them sit for about 10 minutes and all of that crud comes off. Okay. So there we go. Our vegetables are done. I'm going to sprinkle the 
balsamic over the top. You probably get maybe about, uh, out of that cup, you're going to get maybe about a little less than half a cup, okay, because it's going to reduce down a lot. Okay, so our vegetables are done. I'll put those over here. You guys did a very nice job on the salad. Not too much left, okay? So these burgers are just about done. They don't take very long. Because you're not really, the only thing you're, you're cooking is if you put the egg in there, the only thing you're cooking is to get the egg congealed, okay? So you're not really, everything else is cooked. The beans are cooked. Okay. Okay, so what you're going to do now is you're going to have to get up again. Okay. Eat. Um... I'm going to put these over there. I'm going to get the rolls over here. Okay, so you take two, and I'll put the sauces over here. And try one, try one with each of the sauces. Mustard and the cucumber dill. And the vegetables. Okay, here you go. We're going to start on the dessert, which is a very, very simple uh, strawberry cream. I'm basically going to use whip topping, and you can use whatever kind of whip topping you like, make your own or whatever you want to do. I'm going to use just store-bought whip topping, uh, some uh, strawberry yogurt, a little bit of vanilla, and then we're going to add some fresh strawberries to that. And then we're going to serve that on uh, the little sponge cakes. You can use pound cake. Whatever you, I, I've told you people before, if you go to the Dollar Tree, you can get a pound cake at the Dollar Tree for a buck. Okay. So whenever I'm zipping around there, I'll pick some up. I have like three or four in my freezer. Uh, pound cake is good to put in your freezer because it never really freezes. It doesn't get solid. So you could take it out for about and two seconds later, you can slice it. Okay, so it always makes a real quick dessert. Okay, so I have in this bowl, I have some whipped topping. And I'm going to add some strawberry yogurt. And I'm, this is Greek yogurt again, it's just because it's a little thicker. And if you wanted to make this with different kinds, different flavors, you can use blueberry, you can use lemon, you can use whatever kind of, of uh, flavoring you like. Uh, if you use lemon yogurt, you could put in blueberries. Okay, blueberries and lemon have a nice taste to it. Just, you know, play around with the different recipes. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to fold this in, which means you're not going to whip it like this because what will happen is the, the, the whip topping will get flat. Okay, you could also make this with whipped cream. If you want to make whipped cream, just use the same thing. But folding it means you just go around, go in the middle, do like a figure eight until it gets all mixed together. Okay, so you just take your time. And there, that's basically done. I'm going to add a little bit of, uh, about a little, little bit of a teaspoon maybe of vanilla. Okay, usually a teaspoon is like a capful. So. And if you're using lemon, you can use lemon juice or lemon flavoring. If you wanted to make it with, uh, with almonds, you can use this. Take uh, vanilla yogurt, uh, put in chopped almonds, and then put in some amaretto or almond flavoring and mix it all together. And you, you can just make all kinds of different flavors with this. Okay, I'm going to take some straw fresh strawberries. And I'm going to cut them up and, and add them right to that, okay? And these are strawberries that I, that I hauled and cleaned when I was home, okay? Make sure when you do that that you're going to use them right away. Otherwise, they get all dried out. Okay. So you can, 
you know, it, it's up to you to depend on, on, on how many you want to put in. Yeah, so. And don't make them really teeny. You know, I, I like to see the fruit in it. I don't like to see it real s squishy. And if you wanted to save a little bit of time, you can just put the, the berries in your food processor and just, you know, or your ninja, just chop them up and just add them in. And that's basically what this is. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that on top of the cake. We're going to, I'm going to add, I'm going to put some uh, slivered almonds on top, and then we're going to drizzle it with chocolate syrup. Okay, so you have a nice little dessert. It takes about two seconds. This, this again, you could make ahead of time, leave it, cover it, leave it in your refrigerator. It'll stay for maybe about two hours or so, and then you may see it start to break down a little bit. But it should last for a while. Again, you could set up a little dessert bar if you're having a party or whatever and have everybody serve themselves, you know. Or again, you could have those annoying people chop up the strawberries while you do something else. <laughs> or you could chop up the strawberry. What you can do with the strawberries, if you really wanted to, to make it fancy, is you can chop them up, uh, add a little Grand Marnier to them with a little bit of sugar, let them macerate, okay, so they absorb all that flavor. Just don't put a whole lot, otherwise they'll get really, really juicy. But just, uh, I love strawberries and Grand Marnier. I love, you know, put that on some waffles. You're all ready to go. That starts your day up, whoop, you know. Nick, when you added the extract, you mixed that together before, you, you're, before you're putting in these fresh strawberries, right? Did, did yeah, I mixed it all together. Just, you didn't add any nuts or anything in there? No, I didn't add any. Okay. There's no nuts in here. No. You can if you want to, you can. Okay. So what we have is a nice little mixture. And that's basically what it is. So I'm going to get a big spoon. And I'll have, let's see. Jackie, you want to, since you're right up front. I'm going to uh, spoon this out. Jackie's going to sprinkle it with some almonds and then we drizzle it with syrup. So this is all you do. You're just going to plop this on top. Anyway. <laughs> get no. I we'll don't get dare get in your way. We'll get it. So you can see you can whip up this dessert. Yeah, we you know we have like... 12, 13 desserts going in cool. about five minutes. So that right there, that was one container of, of Cool Whip and uh, two things makes uh, 16. So you have 16. So if you really like the people, they could have two each. <laughs> so then we're going to drizzle it with just a little bit of uh, chocolate syrup. Does anybody not want chocolate syrup? No, too bad. I saw, that when I was buying this syrup, I saw they have chocolate mint syrup, which I had never seen before. Okay. I'll leave this here. Get yourself a fork, and we're all set to go. So uh, I hope you enjoyed everything tonight. I hope you try some of these recipes, and we'll see most of you next week. Okay? Yes. Thanks. Thanks. Go for it. Well, that was our class for this session, and I hope you enjoyed watching and learned something along the way. If you could not attend the class and are interested in the recipes, you can email me at nrizzo at roadrunner.com. I would like to thank Chicago Lake Central School, Mrs. Amy Redman, all my class participants, 
and my wife, Kathy, for her support in my many crazy endeavors. Thank you.